lethal levels of radiations, out-of-this-world anomalies, and bloodthirsty factions. These are a large part of the zone's dangers, but the forbidden area around Chernobyl would never be as threatening to visitors without its creatures and mutants. Hello, stalkers, and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video, we will talk about the local monsters, and more specifically, about the mutated humanoids of the exclusion zone. Before taking a closer look at every type of humanoid mutant, let's start with some general information about these creatures. What we call humanoid mutants are monsters who have a body very similar to a human, with two legs, two arms, and a head on top. It is almost guaranteed that these mutants were human at some point, but they suffered horrible changes to their bodies and minds. For some, this meant completely losing their human intellect in favor of other skills, basically turning them into animals with primitive instincts. But others seem to have kept some of their human behavior, while their brains were improved to grant them extraordinary abilities. Now the question is, how did these mutations take place? More specifically, did they appear naturally over time due to the radiations and anomalies, or were they the result of secret experiments conducted in the zone? Well, as we will see, it depends on each kind of mutant. Another important point to bring up is the mutant capacity to reproduce. In other words, can these humanoid creatures breed? To me, the answer is straight up no. But we will elaborate a bit more for each mutant species. And now, without further ado, let's take a closer look at each kind of humanoid mutants. A man whose both body and mind have been broken down by the zone, the snark is now an insane carnivorous monster moving on all four. While it has lost all of its humanity and is considered to be an insane creature, the snork seems to have kept some of its former intellect, as it is capable of using different tactics to its advantage, such as ambushes, hit and run, and other things reminding of guerrilla warfare. On the physical side, the snork's spine seem to have suffered a lot, as it is clearly visible on their back. Yet, the mutant is able to quickly move around and perform long and acrobatic jumps that a normal person cannot do. This is partially explained by the fact that their feet contain a lot of highly elastic tendons. In-game, the snorks are usually found in small groups, living in both outside and underground locations. They are always wearing military boots and clothes, as well as old models of Soviet gas masks, resembling a GP4 or GP5. This strongly suggests that Snorks were once army soldiers who were abandoned into the zone, and gradually and naturally mutated into the monster. Therefore, I believe that Snorks were not created in laboratories, but are just what remains of the guards that were on duty within the zone when it appeared, during the second disaster in 2006, as well as the soldiers who were sent straight to the center of the zone as part of the early military operations into the zone, who, of course, never came back. Because of this, I think that snorks are not able to reproduce, and thus it should be possible to destroy them all. However, they can be seen in great numbers in the games, meaning that I might be wrong, or that there is just a very large supply of these snorks, possibly because the number of soldiers lost to the zone in its early days was in the thousands, if not even more. According to all the internet archives of GSC's website, 
The first encounter with the creature occurred on the 22nd of May 2007, when a snork arrived at a military checkpoint and killed an officer using a rusty shotgun. Of course, the canonicity of this event is questionable, but it is possible that snorks had not been affected by the zone as much back in 2007, and that they still knew how to operate weapons, much like zombified stalkers. In any case, the archive also reveals that the creature was called Recruit at the time, and it only gained the name of Snork after a German RTL journalist named Ulrich Klose used the word Snorchel, which means snorkel, to call the monster. Finally, Professor Sakharov mentions an hypothesis for which the snorks are the next species in human evolution. I mean, if everything goes wrong and the zone takes over the world, this might become true. A semi-legendary monster which haunts the dreams of every stalker. The bloodsucker resembles a human with tentacles around its mouth. However, by looking closely, it is easy to understand that the comparison ends here. The hands of the creature are claws, its feet are barely human, and its head. Not only is the jaw replaced by four tentacles, but the eyes are weird and glowing and on some specimens it is possible to see the brain at the back of the head, indicating that they might have no skull. All of this makes the bloodsucker the least human out of all the human with mutants, and some even consider it to be an animal mutant. But for me, the bloodsuckers were created inside secret labs. How else could a man be turned into this? Moreover, the bloodsucker's abilities are very unique. Not only is it able to feed on the blood of its victims using its tentacles, but it has an optical camouflage which allows the bloodsucker to practically become invisible. Because of this, the monster can sneak up to its prey, paralyze it with its claws, and suck up its blood with its tentacles. In game, the bloodsuckers can be found both alone and in groups, and they inhabitate many different locations, such as forests, swamps, and underground tunnels. This diversity is backed up by the fact that the bloodsucker has a number of different subspecies with slight differences. There are the normal bloodsuckers, the underground bloodsuckers, and the marsh bloodsuckers who are able to snatch their victims and jump away with them, which reminds a lot of the snork's agility. There also seems to be a rare, plain bloodsucker, who, unlike its counterparts, is not afraid of big open spaces. My theory is that, originally, there was only one type of bloodsucker, which was created as part of an experiment in X laboratories but after the monsters escaped, and populated the zone, they naturally mutated because of the radiations and anomalies, much like other creatures, and these created the subspecies whose mutations and unique characteristics are linked to the place they live in. In fact, it was confirmed by GSC that in Stalker 2, the looks of mutants will change depending on their habitat, so we can expect more such species. In Shadow of Chernobyl, it was revealed that the bloodsucker's tentacles contain a special gland, which produces a ferment capable of dissolving the skin, but also of simultaneously preventing blood from clotting. Thus, collecting samples and studying this ferment could bring great advances in science and medicine. Also, it seems that some stalkers believe in the bloodsucker's tentacles acting as a good luck charm, and they are ready to pay to get their hands on it. To finish with the bloodsuckers, I need to mention that they like to make nests, 
where they can sleep in standing position, as seen in Call of Pripyat. Now remains the question about whether or not the bloodsuckers are able to reproduce. Considering their state, and the fact that none of the necessary organs are visible, I want to say no, but the rise of the bloodsucker population is undeniable. Perhaps the deranged minds who created the bloodsuckers also came up with a new way for them to reproduce. Or it is also possible that bloodsuckers continue to be conceived inside a still operational lab. I would not be surprised if the scientists behind the experiments continued to kidnap people, possibly stalkers, turned them into mutants, and then released them into the zone. This goes for the bloodsuckers, but also for the next mutants we'll talk about now. <sighs> Legends tell of a putrid hole deep in the center of the zone where the controllers would be born. Yet, it is more likely that these mutants were created in X-Labs, as part of Psy-Control experiments on human test subjects. Indeed, the controller resembles a normal human with an abnormally large head, which appears to have been modified to grant him the power of creating Psy-emissions. Aside from longer fingers and animal feet, much like the bloodsucker, the controller looks much more human, and seems to have kept most of his former intellect. Considering his new abilities, it could even be argued that the controller is smarter than humans, as he is able to create a small psi field around him, as well as shoot psi bolts in the direction of his enemies given that he has a direct line of sight with them. This could hint at the fact that Psy emissions act a bit like waves, and that they are affected by terrain. Like a sound wave, if you will. But it's just a theory. In any case, a competent controller can take over the mind of surrounding stalkers and make them into his allies, slowly turning them into zombies. Some of them are also able to generate phantoms and other kind of illusions. Unlike most other mutants, the controller is quite slow, which is probably its only weakness. In the games, controllers mostly appear as loners, and they are usually found nearby an active or formerly active source of Psy emissions. But that's not always the case. One particularly weird controller encounter is scripted to happen at the dangerous cave in Zaton. Upon entering his lair, the controller will warn the intruder. Leave here, man. Go! Get out of here while you can! This confirms that controllers have retained their cognitive abilities and are indeed able to talk at least via some sort of telepathy. Also, the fact that the controller calls you a human is quite significant. It means that the controller does not consider itself to be human. Perhaps he embraced his condition of mutant and realized that he completely lost his humanity. Or maybe he was never a man in the first place. Moving on, the very small number of controllers and the only known presence of male subjects makes me believe that they are unable to reproduce. But as I mentioned before, it is possible that someone is still turning people into these creatures, even to this day. For now, we simply don't know. <laughs> A wrinkled and deformed dwarf-like creature, the Bureau is one of the rarest and most dangerous mutants in the zone. Very little is known about them, since they only canonically appear in Call of Pripyat, but I have no doubt that they are the result of secret lab experiments. Indeed, Bureaus tend to appear in abandoned underground facilities, and most specifically, 
in laboratory X8, and they are known to dislike bright lights. Furthermore, Bureaus possess incredible powers that they could only have gained from experiments, such as powerful telekinesis and the ability to create force fields. In-game, the Bureaus are gifted with the following special attacks. Making objects fly and throw them at enemies, creating a medium-range shockwave to damage any unprotected target, creating a force field which will protect them from bullets, shrapnels and other physical attacks, draining a stalker's stamina to cut out his escape, pulling a weapon out of a stalker's hands, effectively disarming him. Also, one Bureau can be heard mimicking the cries of a child as a tactic to lure the player into a trap. Considering all of this, it is easy to understand the huge threat posed by even a single Bureau, especially since they are very intelligent and very good at using their abilities. For example, Bureaus will throw away grenades using their telekinesis, possibly even pushing the explosive back to whoever tossed it in the first place. Also, I want to mention that the Bureau's protective field is most likely of gravitational nature, as it looks a lot similar to the effects around gravitational artifacts from Shadow of Chernobyl, which are known to protect from attacks such as incoming projectiles. I believe that such fields simply deviate bullets and other high-velocity objects, but I could be wrong, who knows. And same as the controller, the very limited number of Bureaus and the lack of female specimens makes me believe that they are unable to reproduce. Alright, I know that there are more humanoid mutants that have been cut from the games, but since they've been completely cut, I'm not going to talk about them into this video. And there goes. We've spoken about all the humanoid mutants from the zone at least those that appear in the final games. Next time we will take a look at the final batch of mutants, the ones whose origins are more complicated and even more mysterious. So stay tuned if you don't want to miss it. Thank you for watching, stalkers, and goodbye.